okay so now in this experiment today we are going to see the performance of the experiment to study the factors affecting rate of evaporation so the requirement for this experiment is we require uh, three metal either three metal pans or we are going to use three different size beakers then measuring cylinder tripod stand wire gauze etc uh, we will need electrical water bath or we will just perform it using be, uh, a burner and in chemicals we will require water and nacl so uh, evaporation is a process to change a substance in a liquid state to a gaseous state due to an increase in the temperature or pressure so the rate of evaporation how you are going to calculate it it is a volume of the liquid which changes from liquid to the gaseous state per unit time okay so for evaporation uh liquid is subjected to heating and the rate of heating governs the rate of evaporation so rate of evaporation can be expressed as rate of heating is equal to u into a into delta t now u is the overall heat transfer coefficient a is the area uh, over which heat transfer will take place and delta t is the temperature difference between the liquid and the surrounding so evaporation rate it depends on the factors such as overall heat transfer coefficient which includes the thermal conductance of the metal pan thickness of the metal pan etc then surface area material in the solution to be evaporated temperature of the liquid and the surrounding etc so now let us see one by one what are the factors which affect the rate of evaporation so the overall heat transfer coefficient it depends on the following factors like uh what is the metal of construction of the evaporator higher is the thermal conductance of the metal higher will be the rate of heat transfer and hence higher will be the rate of evaporation then the next factor factor which affect is the thickness of the metal of construction of the evaporator so the thickness of metal is inversely proportional to the rate of heat transfer and inversely proportional to the rate of evaporation more hence we can say more is the thickness uh, less will be the rate of evaporation because that much time will be required uh, for the heat to get transferred uh, from the so he a source of heating to the liquid and also uh, as we know in the uh, heat transfer process uh, as the length of the material it increases the resistance also increases okay so thickness is inversely proportional to the rate of evaporation next we have thickness of the laminar layer of la liquid so the thickness of the laminar layer of the liquid it is inversely proportional to the rate of heat transfer and evaporation so thickness of laminar layer of the liquid is minimized by creating turbulence so we can say this laminar layer it act as stagnant layer okay and through st and a stagnant layer it provides greater resistance okay so more is the thickness of the stagnant layer more will be the resistance for the heat transfer right and less is the stagnant layer less will be the resistance that means less is the stagnant layer less is the thickness of the stagnant layer more efficient will be heat transfer right so we can say the rate of evaporation will increase in this case so uh, how you can uh, minimize the size of the stagnant layer you have to create turbulence okay you have to make the liquid uh to move in motion and because of this the thickness of the stagnant layer will decrease okay so to increase the rate of evaporation what you can do is you can insert a uh, stirrer or an agitator okay so this will diminish the stagnant layer then surface area surface area is directly proportional to the rate of heat transfer and evaporation more is the surface area more will be the rate of evaporation okay then next is temperature difference so temperature difference is directly proportional to the rate of heat transfer and evaporation more you provide the heat more you increase the temperature more will be the rate of heat transfer and more will be the rate of um, evaporation the last factor is the concentration of the substance in the liquid so according to raoult's law uh, vapor pressure lowering of solution it uh, depends on the mole fraction of non volatile solute which leads to increase in the pressure difference between solution and the atmosphere thus more quantity of heat will be required to boil that liquid which uh, in turn lowers the rate of evaporation so now let us see how this experiment is 
perform it. Now we are going to see how are we going to perform this practical. So first we will um, see what procedure we are going to follow. So we are going to divide this procedure into three parts. Part A, Part B and Part C. So in Part A we are going to determine what is the effect of the surface area on the rate of evaporation. Okay. So for that we are going to use three different type of uh, three different beakers of different sizes. Okay. So uh, the surface area will vary as the sizes different. Okay, so we will fill all the three beakers with 50 ml of water and we will heat those beakers for 10 minutes. Okay, and then at the end of 10 minutes, we will stop heating and then we will determine uh, the rate of uh, evaporation by determining the volume which is left after 10 minutes of heating. Right, so this is part A. Then part B will consist of uh, we will we are going to study the effect of time on rate of evaporation. Okay, time is also one factor which affects the rate of evaporation. So we will take three beakers of same size, same radius, and we will fill all the three beakers with, with 50 ml of water, and then we will heat it, uh, heat all the three beakers, but we, we are going to heat it for different times. Like uh, uh, beaker A, we will heat it for five minutes. Beaker B, we will heat it for 7.5 minutes. And beaker C, we are going to heat for 10 minutes. Okay. Then we, at the end of uh, that timing, at the end of 5 minutes, 7.5 minutes and 10 minutes, we will determine what amount of water is left into that beakers. And on this basis, we can calculate what is the uh, rate of evaporation in each of the uh, beaker. Okay. And part C, it consists of, we are going to prepare solutions of NaCl. Okay. We are going to vary the concentration. We will prepare 10% NaCl solution, 20% NaCl solution and 30% NaCl solution. Okay, so we are going to heat these um, so different types of solution in same uh, radius or same um, volume of beaker Okay, of the same size. We will heat those uh, solutions for 10 minutes and then we will determine what is the rate of evap evaporation for 10%, 20% and 30% of the solution. Right, now we will start with part A. So first we have taken three beakers, you can see here these are the three beakers of different size, right? Now we will, we will determine what is the actual radius of these three beakers. We have to determine the internal radius, okay? Now if you look at this, the internal radius of uh, this uh, beaker is 5.2, okay? So A beaker is of the radius 5.2. Now our beaker B, it is of the radius 4.8 and beaker C has the radius of 4, 4 centimeters, right? Now we will fill each of these beakers with 50 ml of water and then we will heat it for 10 minutes. Now we have set the uh, beakers on the burners. And one by one, we will start the burner and we will also start the time for which we are going to heat this particular beaker. So now this is our A uh, uh, beaker and now we will see we had put first 50 ml 
of water and now after 10 minutes of evaporation let us see how much amount of water is remaining in it so if you look at this okay 20 ml of water has been evaporated in just 10 minutes from beaker A this is, now this is our beaker B so we will determine how much amount of water has been evaporated in this also we have taken first 50 ml So you can see here the amount of water remaining is 31 ml. Now this is our last C beaker and now let us see how much more amount of water has been evaporated. So if you look here carefully the amount of water remaining is 32 ml. Now we will start with our part B. We have taken three containers or three beakers of the same radius. In that we have prepared uh, NaCl solution. As you can see here, this is 10% NaCl solution, this is 20% NaCl solution and this is 30% of the NaCl solution. Right? Now we are going to heat all of these three beakers at the same time for the next 10 minutes and then we will determine at the end of 10 minutes what amount of volume remains in this beakers. Right? Now we will proceed with the practical. So first this is our beaker which contains the 10 ml solution of NaCl. Now we will start heating it. This is our next solution which contains 20 ml of NaCl. And this is the last beaker containing 30% of the NaCl solution. Okay. Now we have started the timing. We will wait for 10 minutes. 10 minutes are over and we will close this, we will stop these burners and we will wait for 2 minutes so that these beakers they get cooled and then we will measure the water. So now our beakers they have cooled and uh, so now we will first take the 10% solution of NaCl and we will measure what volume is remaining. solution we will measure its volume so it is almost 39.5 20% is in area 39.5 and this last is our 30 ml solution, 30 percent solution. So the remaining amount is 41 ml. Now we will proceed with the last part. contains 50 ml of water. Now we are going to heat the A beaker for 5 minutes, B beaker for 5 minutes and beaker C for the next 10 minutes. Right? So now we will put them on burners. So we will first increase the beaker A. minutes 
So now our 10 minutes are over and we will switch off this burner and we will wait so that uh, this burner, uh, this beaker gets full and then we will measure the volume. So now first we will measure the volume of the beaker A. So we will pour it in the measuring cylinder. Earlier it contained 50 ml of water. Now the water remaining is 42 ml. So in 7.5 minutes, 8 ml of water has been evaporated. And now lastly we will take the beaker C which we have heated for 10 minutes. This beaker also contained 50 ml of water. Now we will see the observation table. So first we will see the observation table for the effect of surface area on the rate of evaporation. Okay. So uh, the beakers which we had taken we named them as A, B and C. We have measured the internal diameter of each beaker and it was uh, the for A beaker its diameter was 5.2. B beaker its diameter was 4.8 and C beaker its diameter was 4. Okay, so three times we took the measurement and then we have taken the average uh, diameter and using this average we have determined the radius, right? Now our beaker is circular so hence we are going to use the formula as pi r square to determine the uh, surface area, right? So by putting the value of this r, <coughs> we have calculated the surface area of A to be 8.16 surface area of b was 7.53 and surface area of c beaker was 6.28 right now in each of these beakers of different surface area we uh, we added 50 ml of pure water hmm? then we heated it for the 10 minutes and then uh, we got um, then we uh, measured what final volume of water was remaining in those beakers right now using these this information we are going to calculate the rate of evaporation okay so the rate of evaporation it can be calculated as initial volume minus final volume divided by time okay now for beaker a initial volume was 50 so 50 minus 30 20 divided by 10 that means the rate of evaporation was uh, 2 ml per minute right then for b uh, the uh, the difference will be 50 minus 31 it gives you 19 divided by, by 10 that means the rate of evaporation for b was 1.9 ml per minute hmm? and for c the difference is 18 ml divided by 10 10 is the time here okay so we get a uh, rate of evaporation to be 1.8 ml per minute right so uh, so uh, we have put these values in this table and from this itself we can conclude that more is the surface area sorry more uh, more is the surface area more is the rate of evaporation so we can say as the surface area increases the rate of evaporation will increase okay now let us see uh, the observation table for to study the effect of concentration of substance in the solution right so uh, we took a beaker we took a single beaker right um, of known radius and known surface area then we prepared a percent weight by volume solution of sodium chloride in the concentration as 10 percent 20 percent and 30 percent right the initial volume of the solution was 50 50 50 in all the three because we took 50 ml of each solution then we heated all these three uh, uh, three solutions for 10 minutes okay then at the end of the 10 minutes, we allowed the beakers to get cooled off and then we measured the volume, what was remaining. 
so we found that for 10% solution the volume which remained in the beaker it was 30.5 ml for 20% concentration the volume which remained in the beaker was 39.5 and for 30 ml of concentration sorry 30% vol uh, weight by volume concentration the final volume which remained in the beaker was 41 ml right so now again we calculated the rate of filtration using the same formula initial volume minus final volume divided by 10 right so uh, for 10% uh, weight by volume solution 50 minus 30.5 gives you 19.5 divided by 10 10 minutes okay so it gives you 1.95 that value we have put in this co uh, column right then for 20% solution 50 minus 39.5 gives 10.5 okay so 10.5 divided by 10 gives 1.05 this value we have put here and for 30 percent solution uh, rate is equal to 50 minus 41 that is 9 divided by 10 so rate becomes 0.9 okay so uh, after just observing or looking at this observation table you can say that as the concentration of the solute in the solution increases the rate of evaporation decreases See, for 10% rate, oh, rate of evaporation is 1.95. For 30% rate of evaporation is 0.9. Okay. So, we can conclude as the concentration of the solute increases, the rate of evaporation decreases. Right. Now, let us see the next observation table and that is to study the effect of time on the rate of evaporation. Okay. So, we had taken <coughs> uh, uh, three beakers of same uh, uh, same radius okay so approximately equal radius in each beaker we had added 50 ml of pure water okay so what difference we did here we heated the beaker a for 5 minutes beaker b for 7.5 minutes and beaker c for 10 minutes right so uh, at the end of this time the volume at the end of 5 minutes the volume which remained in beaker a was 46 ml at the end of 7.5 minutes, the volume which remained in beaker B was 42 and at the end 42 ml and at the end of 10 minutes, the volume which remained in beaker C was 39 ml, right? So, now we will calculate the rate of evaporation using the formula initial volume minus final volume divided by time, right? So, now rate, uh, rate of uh, evaporation for beaker A is equal to 50 minus 46 gives you 4 divided by time was 5 minutes, okay. So, 4 by 5 uh, gives you 0.8, okay. Uh, then, um, for beaker B, uh, so that 0.8 value we have put in this uh, table, okay. So, for beaker B, the uh, volume which remained was 42. So, final volume, so the uh, initial volume minus final volume. 50 minus 42 gives 8 hmm? 8 and the time was 7.5 so 8 by 7.5 gives 1.067 so that value we have added in the table and the last was beaker c which was heated for the next 10 minutes so the final volume remaining was 39 okay so 50 minus 39 gives you 11 11 by 10 gives you 1.1 okay now we have added this one here okay now if you just look at these two columns you can easily tell by uh, increasing the time for which you allow the rate, uh, the evaporation to occur, the rate of evaporation also increases, right? So, this is the simple observation. So, in the result, we will just conclude uh, or we will just report that rate of evaporation increases with increase in the surface area of evaporating surface, rate of evaporation increases with increase in time and rate of evaporation decreases with increase in the concentration of the substance or the solute in the solution right so now the very most commonly asked questions related to this experiment is first you will be either asked to uh, define evaporation okay so what is evaporation it is a process um, in which the uh, it is a process of concentrating a product by carrying out evaporation of the liquid material okay uh, into it by application of heat so that is evaporation uh, the next question which is very frequently asked is the you will have to explain the factors which affect the rate of evaporation so one factor is surface area 
as the surface area increases the rate of evaporation decreases second is temperature as the temperature increases the rate of evaporation increases next is um, humidity in the atmosphere as the humidity of uh, in the atmosphere increases the rate of evaporation decreases then uh, next factor is uh, time the uh, the more you allow the process to occur for a longer period of time the more will be your rate of evaporation then also it depends the factor which affect rate of evaporation is the uh, formation of film and deposit uh, or the uh, scaling okay so uh, if deposits are formed inside your evaporator then your rate of transfer will rate of heat transfer will decrease okay so these are the different factors which affect the rate of evaporation then uh, next question very commonly asked is you will have to give the examples of heat exchangers the most common example of heat exchanger is shell and tube type of heat exchanger multipass uh, heat exchanger floating head heater okay so these are the different examples of uh, heat exchangers then you will also be asked to write the applications of evaporation so uh, evaporation is used for n number of uh, methods or um, operations uh, in pharmaceutical industry like uh, you can carry out evaporation for concentrating the tinctures okay uh, for concentrating the extracts okay so these are the different applications uh, then you will be also asked to give the application of the climbing film here evaporator okay now this climbing film evaporator uh, it is very very important uh, because it can be used for heat sensitive material okay so climbing film evaporator is used most frequently for the production of uh, insulin and liver extracts and climbing film evaporator is also used in food industry and basically it is used for concentrating the juices okay so these are the different applications of climbing film evaporator so this was all about the experiment of factors affecting rate of evaporation thank you